Young people came together in St. Paul to have their voices heard. Thousands of students showed up for a sit-in on the front lawn of the state capitol. A few high school seniors organized the event through social media as a protest against what they're calling police brutality. Teenagers from all over the Twin Cities responded. Just sick and tired of the injustice and we want to see change and we're ready for that. You know, I sit at night sometimes and I cry like with my family because this, like, this is so wrong in so many ways. Protest was called Sit to Breathe, and it was peaceful from start to finish. Many kids are witnessing these large, peaceful protests, like that one right there at the Capitol. But at the same time, they've seen rioting and burning. They've seen fires. This is following the death of George Floyd. And that is a lot of parents wondering how they can help their children of all ages really cope with what they're seeing and with what's happening. So today we've asked for advice from Dr. Gigi Chala, Chief of Pediatrics at Children's Minnesota. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Thanks for having me today. You know, Dr. Gigi, this isn't just watching this on the news. This is stuff that children and families are experiencing where they're living. And can we just get in right into the topic of racism? Not so much how to talk about it, but just to, to start that we should talk about it. Oh, this is such an important topic. And first of all, I'm so proud of those teenagers that organized that event yesterday and um, showed and used their voice. That, that is wonderful. But it is so important to talk about this topic and really not shelter your children from racism or shelter them from what's going on um, right now in our community. That sheltering is part of what has created the problem of racism um, at the heart. And you know, I think the American Academy of Pediatrics has um, really uh, re highlighted how important this topic of racism is as we've created a policy statement around the impact of child health of racism. This is really an uncomfortable topic for many families, whether black or white. Um, but it is uh, that discomfort is is the part that's going to help get to change. And it's really going to take the adults doing that deep dive of learning about racism in order to help be part of the education for our kids. And we know that every family's experience is different when it comes to racism and when it comes to these topics. But can you just give us a little guidance on how you start this conversation? Yeah, I think this is a really important uh, topic that families ask all the time, like, how do I even do this? It's so enormous to talk about racism. And I, I think right now in this acute period, the, the most important thing is to talk about how you feel first. Um, and so as a grown up, I usually start with how I'm feeling how it makes, whether it's sad or angry or helpless or anything like that, and then really say how it makes my body feel and then how I feel like I can get past it or, or make it just a little bit better today. And then asking your, your children to do the same, pretty soon reversing it so that your children start first and they can talk about how they're feeling, how it makes them feel and what they wanna do in order to make an action and a change. I think the next step after we talk about our feelings and how it makes us feel um, is, is really to ask, ask what they hear, mm -hmm. ask what they know. And you know they're gonna be getting all sorts of information from places we don't even, know that they're getting information from. So it's our time to ask so that we can also correct uh, any, any misconceptions and ensure that they're getting the full picture of how, how that really um, uh, is played out in our community. And then I think the, the last part then is to take those moments mm -hmm. to really teach. Um, and to teach things like saying um, that all lives matter is something that hides racism instead of really highlighting black lives matter or brown lives matter really get to the heart of racism and what we need to help correct. So we know that they're getting, as you just mentioned, all kinds of information, whether they're seeing it out on the streets or they're in their neighborhood or they're seeing it on television or in magazines, but they're also getting a lot of information from us and how our behaviors and how we choose to live our lives. Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, you know, I think uh, as we recognize how all of those things make us feel, they're very perceptive. And so using moments to really do things um, like as you are thinking about 
helping your community or, or donate, um, getting their involvement in all of that is very healing also. I did also wanna highlight two books that I think can be very helpful for, um, for parents. The first is a virtual book that's, that's called Something Happened in Our Town. And that is really helpful in giving parents some of the dialogue to begin that conversation. The other is, um, Daddy, there's a noise outside. And that mm -hmm. really teaches kids about police violence. And it teaches kids about all the different ways that people can use their voice um, from uh, silent sit-ins to petitions, boycotts, protesting, marches, and even c civil disobedience. And it talks about how to channel that into peaceful things. And that, those are conversations that have to begin at very early ages. Um, and so those books can be quite helpful. That's what I'm wondering. Is it ever really too early to start? Because we know that children's opinions and ideas can be formed be I mean, before they're even one years old. That's exactly right. So utilizing some of those beautiful baby books that have got all different types of faces is really, really critical. By the time that kids are three or four, they've already been indoctrinated into kind of some social right. um, norms. Um, and even children, will they will pick um, white baby dolls instead of black baby dolls to play with and think mm -hmm. that there are are good and bad things mm -hmm. associated with them. So you really need to start this if you want to raise children um, who are not racist, who are anti-racist, right. super early on, like even in the you know in um, infancy, to mm -hmm. begin that process of combating racism. All right, Dr. Gigi, we'll be sure to put those books on our website as well. We really appreciate your insight this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.